Hello, my autumn peeps! This is an exciting video for me because this is the last, the 12th video in the series of Edinburgh month by month videos. So yeah, we're finally done with this series. Yay! A lot of you have asked me to make the September one and that is why this is being published probably like two weeks earlier than I would normally publish these videos uh, because I think that some of you might be coming into Edinburgh in like a week or two so this video might give you a bit of an idea what to expect. I will start by saying that September is one of the best times to come here. It is still quite a vibrant time, quite a, like a happening time here in Edinburgh. And it is also a great time to go on little day trips. It's a, a time that weather-wise is quite friendly towards like little hikes and things like that. So yeah, really one of the perfect times to visit Edinburgh and Scotland together with, I would say like May, maybe June as well. It in the past I used to say that August is already the transitional month kind of going from summer to autumn. I think that now that we're having all these like hotter summers with a lot of heat waves this is kind of moving more towards September while I can see how some other cities like Prague are hardly even like getting into autumniness in September at all. So yeah, I would say that in the future we're gonna see September being the transitional month. And what does that mean in a more specific way? Well, so the start of this month, of this particular September, has actually been really warm. I think we were seeing temperatures of about like 22 degrees. Okay, to a lot of you this is not gonna sound very warm, but to us 22 degrees is when we start being like, oh, it's kind of hard to sleep and it was humid and it's just not very autumny. I think that when like you're in that mindset of like, oh, I could do with some sort of nice like spiced latte and it's still 22 degrees and almost 100% humidity and you're kind of looking forward to it finally snapping into proper autumn. I am so happy to say that now as I am shooting this, we are getting like the most beautiful autumn weather. It has been so sunny yet so fresh. You start getting that like nice cool breeze. Yeah, it, it really is uh, starting to like to trigger that uh, aggressive autumning mood in me. So yeah, we're going from like 20-ish degrees at the start of September to about like 15-ish towards the end of it or maybe like 10 to 15. It really depends on the time of the day and if it is sunny because the sun is still quite powerful at this time of the year. Like if you're walking around and it's not like extremely windy, the sun will warm you up. But in the evening when the sun is gone, you will get chilly. So if you're packing for your trip, Keep that in mind that especially in the very early morning and in the evening it's gonna be chilly and also now that the energy costs are so high it's possible that wherever you will be staying will be colder than usual. So I would say if you had to pack one kind of wintertime item of clothing bring some fuzzy socks. The nature is also getting quite autumny. Uh, you can definitely see some trees changing colors already and this is mid-autumn so like this is September 16th and Simon always just kind of like stops me in my tracks to show me a tree that's turning colors which is not because he's excited he just knows that I will be excited. Um, if your main motivation to come to Scotland is to see autumnal colors then this is not a bad time to come because I think that in Edinburgh and in kind of like the center Central belt in the cities in the south, you will see that the colors do genuinely start changing kind of end of September. But if you want to go into the highlands, mid-September might be the best time for it because uh, we visited the highlands uh, last year or two years ago. That was like mid-September and yeah, it, it was beautiful. And I definitely think that if we went there 
two weeks later it wouldn't be nearly as nice. Um, also again the weather tends to be really pleasant in September all over Scotland so it's just the days are not quite short enough to be an inconvenience and uh, there's enough kind of brightness and sunshine for you to enjoy that nice autumniness. You can also do some foraging actually because uh, this is a really nice season for both brambles and mushrooms. With mushrooms you know you have to uh, trust your I wouldn't say intuition. Don't trust your intuition even if you have it. Please do your research before you eat any wild mushrooms. Brambles on the other hand are pretty easy to spot and uh, I think that all of us grew up with that wisdom of don't eat the bottom ones, that's where dogs pee. So as long as you don't pick those uh, then you can have a lot of free fruit and again these days fruit is pretty expensive so you know you might be able to pick yourself a nice little sort of porridgey portion for the next morning or two or some of my friends are making like jam and you know all sorts of conserved fruity goodness so you might want to look into that especially if you're already a local in Scotland. Now historically usually what I said about why I like September so much in Edinburgh is that obviously we get the festival season in August and that feels extremely kind of congested. If you live here you don't always go out to enjoy the festival, sometimes you go out to do other things and all the visitors and all the events like it gets a bit much. I mean it lasts over three weeks so it's it's a lot. So then when the festival suddenly stops it really it's like that one like the first day after your cold finally went away and you can finally breathe again. Um, however this year there were two events that kind of like stepped into that like nice breathing <laughs> sense that we got. Well first of them is one that happens every year it's just that last two years it, it wasn't as strong uh, which is the student sort of like freshers week and the welcome events because obviously especially when it comes to Edinburgh University a lot of the events they throw for fresh incoming students are actually taking place at the very same venues as the fringe shows were. So like you know Bristow Square and George Square around the meadows and you can really see like a lot of students around and especially if for any reason if, you, if you're moving here I think that if you're a visitor uh, as in like a touristy visitor and you're coming for a couple of days it will not inconvenience you that much. If you are however moving here and this is like your first month here then first of all congratulations that you found a flat in September which is usually the most impossible month to be looking for accommodation due to all the studentiness. I mean I guess August also isn't that good but September is bad. Yes, <laughs> if you just moved here and you want to just kind of like go about your business you will notice that the streets, especially in areas that are quite studenty like Newington but even here in Dal Rai are quite busy for some reason little. Every little I've been to in the past four days has been extremely busy. Also I noticed that um, in one of the tents for the welcome events for Edinburgh University they are clearly giving away some vouchers for dominoes so all dominoes are really busy now. <laughs> Which I find ridiculous. I was trying to walk somewhere through Newington and there was like 50 students waiting in a queue for Domino's. Domino's isn't even that good. Obviously the other event that uh, brought in extra people from all across Scotland and also from across the world uh, was the royal funeral. Um, even though I think that technically what we had in Edinburgh wasn't the official royal funeral just yet. We did have the funeral procession um, when the casket was kind of traveling up Royal Mile and the whole royal family was basically here. King Charles, all of his siblings, his wife, they were all traveling up Royal Mile to St. Giles Cathedral and then for the next 24 hours people could visit St. Giles Cathedral and visit the Queen's casket. I think that some of my friends were queuing for that and it took them four hours to get there but some people actually waited for up to 12 hours. So ah. Uh, yeah, the, there was like an airport style security to get into the queue at all and the queue basically went from St. Giles Cathedral towards the meadows and then it kind of zigzagged up and down and it was just so long. Um, I only saw it on the first day before it was actually like 
active, but it was already there because people were queuing from like way before the procession happened. Um, so yeah, I guess a lot of people really cared a lot about um, paying respect to the Queen. Now here's an idea for a thing you can do in September that is not necessarily Scottish, but it is very closely tied with a culture that to me is quite Scottish, which is the Chinese Scottish community. Um, so this is the Mid-Autumn Festival, which tends to take place sometime during September. The Mid-Autumn Festival, I think, is the name that is usually used for the Chinese iteration of this holiday, but they are also celebrated in other countries of East Asia. It takes place on the day of what is supposed to be the year's most beautiful full moon. And we actually went out, we bought a moon cake, which is really easy to get here because we have a huge Chinese community in Edinburgh. So there's a lot of Chinese supermarkets and they do stock all of these special treats like mooncakes and Asian pears to let people celebrate. So we bought one of them and we took it to Kelton Hill and we saw just a humongous <laughs> orange full moon. And I am kind of scared of the moon. So <laughs> I really had to like put myself into a special headspace to enjoy that, but I did enjoy it. Oh, and also as a little warning, um, in the UK, in general, uh, autumn is not really as much of a thing as in the States uh, or, let's say, Japan. There's, you know, multiple countries that, like, lean into the aesthetic and the flavors of autumn. UK isn't really one of them. You will see some seasonal thingies and treats in larger supermarkets. I know that Sainsbury's has a little line of like autumnal flavors, but what you will start seeing at this point is Christmas stuff. Yes, I went out three days ago and I kid you not, you can now buy mince pies. On September 10th, you can buy a mince pie. And I do like a mince pie, but uh, personally, I think that my first mince pie of the year falls into like the last week of November. I think that is reasonable. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think this is genuinely because there isn't really that much on the calendar kind of coming up before Christmas and Christmas really is like the holiday in British culture. So I can't really be mad at them. Like I, I get excited about the stuff, but um, I would prefer if I could still enjoy the run up to Halloween and then I could enjoy the run up to Christmas. Well, anyway, <laughs> that is just a little pro tip. Maybe you're coming at the end of September and you would like to actually try some UK Christmas treats, but you're not coming for the actual Christmas in the UK. So you might find this super practical, super convenient. Yeah, get yourself a mince pie. I recommend it. <laughs> Alrighty, so I think that's it. Um, it is quite exciting that we have this series all finished now. Uh, we have been thinking about what to replace it with. One of the strong contenders in our sort of brainstorming session was kind of like a um, a series of videos where we focus on different neighborhoods of Edinburgh. I think that would be really fun to make and we could make like one a month and really kind of visit multiple places, coffee shops, parks, shops, restaurants in a specific neighborhood, uh, which might also help you maybe decide where to move if you want to move to Edinburgh. Uh, but don't worry, we also are working on the video that's more of a kind of like a quick kind of fly through different neighborhoods in Edinburgh specifically for people who are trying to decide where to move. But of course, if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see in the next series of videos that come every month, let us know in the comments below. We're always like mostly doing this for you. So <laughs> like it only makes sense for you to tell us what you'd like to see. And even if it's not an idea for like a whole series, even if it's just a standalone video, let us know in the comments below because we will absolutely put it on the list. And once we're back from our honeymoon, uh, we will have a look at it and create more stuff. So that's that. Don't forget that I have an Etsy store. There's a link in the doobly-doo and there's actually a couple of new things in there now. There are some autumn-y kind of Halloween-y things like this pumpkin koo and also this spooky edition of the Edinburgh castle. Uh, and there's also new additions to the stamp series like Victoria Street and Arthur's Seat. Sorry, street and seat sound very similar. <laughs> wow. 
answer. Well done. I'm tired. I am also usually somewhat active on Instagram on either Kaki Bot for my illustrations or Kaki Blog for my photos. I hope you have fun visiting Edinburgh in September and I shall see you soon. Bye, scary fingies. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs>